It's hard to believe. Coach Calipari is starting his 10th season as the head coach of the University of Kentucky basketball team. And he could have his most talented team maybe since Carl Anthony Towns, Devin Booker, Tyler Eulis. He is certainly excited about this year's team. Coach, can you believe it's been 10 years? Going on 10, how about that? And uh, it went fast, but when I look in the mirror, I say, wow, what did this place do to me? Um, you know, someone will ask, uh, what have you learned to, to survive? Uh, 10 years at Kentucky at this pace and, 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 and what's thrown at you is, uh, it, it ages you if you look back. I just keep marching forward. Just next step, next step. Then I go to sleep. But you're still having fun with it. I am. I am. I'm, um, you know, if you think about you're in a position and you're able to change lives and make families' lives better, um, every home I go into, you know, people say I hate recruiting. I, hate I don't. I don't hate it. And the reason I don't hate it is because when I go in a home, and I probably shouldn't give up secrets, but I want to know about their family. Where's your family from? Where did you two meet? What's your background? What's your family's background? Talk to me, you know, how did... And so you learn about other families from across this country. Um, I tell them about our story, my, through, my family through Ellis Island. My parents are high school educated laborers, wanted a college education for their children. That was their whole goal. If we could do that, you have a good start on life. And from there it becomes the same story to all of them as far as what Kentucky is and what it isn't. It may not be for you, but this is what it is and this is what it isn't. I don't tell a different thing to different kids and this is good, because then you got to remember everything you said. You know, if you're going to be honest, this is what it is. So my sit down with these families, I'll be honest, is basically I'm not anxious going in because it's going to be the same as the other thousand that I've done throughout my career. You get the chance to go hang out with some of the, the old guys from time to time down at the pharmacy or other places. And I'm just curious, like I remember seeing Kay Wood one time speaking and, and he told some wonderful stories. Is there one that, that kind of makes you laugh all the time or one that you hear that kind of sticks out in your mind about past Kentucky coach, player, some sort of story from... Well, they, they, when, when I, I'd be with Kevin Grevy and some of the guys, and, and because Coach Hall is such a gentleman and has been so great to me, he's in my practice, he was in here uh, uh, this weekend, but he'll come in two, three days a week and sit and watch his practice and tell me I should be playing 1-3-1. One, one. He's just such a kind person. And Kevin will say, he was tough when he coached here. He wasn't so kind then. I said, was he tough? Ooh, he was a great coach, but I'll tell you what, he was tough. And uh, I said, to follow Coach Rupp, you had to be tough to survive all of it and win a national title. You had to be tough. I was going to ask you about Coach Hall. Just, just what does he mean to the program? At, you know, past and even now, like you said. Well, what I love is that, you know, when he comes to games and he's introduced, he gets to see the appreciation that they have. Again, I'm going to say this: it's following Coach Rupp is like following Coach Wooden. I mean, you. You don't wish that on anyone unless you don't like them. And then you wish it right on them. Yeah, take that job. And he did it and won and did it for like 13 years, which is crazy. Um, and I think people now are even appreciating him more as they look back and say, wow, what a tough thing. And he was that guy. You've got to have a little fun with the Duke and, and Kentucky football teams. I mean, they're both playing out of their minds right yeah. now. How fun is Syracuse that? Syracuse, too. And, and how wild is it that, that now it seems like people are talking about how football is helping you in recruiting? I, did, I didn't shave today because, like, no one even knows about me or basketball right now. That's the first time ever. Yeah. So I went, I had to shave in my office for this. Because I'm roaming around, they don't see me, they don't even recognize me. It's, this is about football. And the great thing is, it took Mark, it wasn't an overnight thing, it was six years. 
six years of building, six years of commitment, six years of building a culture that the players have to carry on. I'm ecstatic. Let's do it in both basketball and football here. Let's do it in every sport here. Let's be that school that academically in all areas, you can come here and do what you're trying to do and become your best version here. In other sports, I'm happy for Mark and those players. I mean, Benny coming back, Josh coming back, some of the other guys coming back, everybody's like, wow. Well, if you ask them now, I think they're enjoying their time and that they get to spend another year here. We talked about the 10 years coming up. You're also going to be 60. Does when? That, Who's going to be does, 60? See, does that, what, what is that, does that hit you? I'm going to be 60? <laughs> Jeez. I didn't even know. Really? Why would you do just, that to me? I'm going to be number. 60? Yeah, you're going to be 60. I, I mean. Look, here, here's what I would tell you. When I, every, every place that I've been, you've had to build, and then you became absolutely the hunted on the road, in your league. So I've been in wars from my UMass days on. Every, the biggest game on someone's schedule. So as I went through that at a young age, I was in my 30s, you know, 29 and then 30 and then, I just said, there's no way I'll be coaching in my 60s. No way. And then I'd be in a locker room 20 minutes before the game, just feeling nauseous and knowing there were no games that like a lock you'd win. I mean, early on. And even later, it was like, you know what? You don't know. Now that I'm approaching this, I'm in Kentucky. I'm able to put these kids on a stage. I'm able to do right by their families. I'm able to tell the truth. I don't lie to them. I, I don't have to. This isn't for everybody. If you don't come here, I'm not going to take it personal. This is about competing every day and making each other better. There's no magic wand. We'll help you. We'll be there. This stage helped all these kids, but they took what they wanted. I'm the orchestra leader right now on that stage, and you know what? 40 kids, 38 kids in nine years have gone to the NBA. Their lives never will be the same. 1.5 billion in contracts, not shoe contracts, endorsements because they were able to play on this stage and perform and take advantage of it and run with it. I'm in that position. Now I'm saying, maybe I'll do this till I'm 70. I don't know, how will I be feeling? But I do know this, I won't ever cheat the school and I won't ever cheat the kids. If I can't do it at this pace, they're asking me, how do you go from this one foot up, next foot up, next, just keep moving. At some point I won't be doing this, I won't have as much stuff to do. But that's not right now. Now, you, we see you at a lot of different sporting events. We'll see you at Steelers. Love it. At the World Series. Love the Bengals. Love the going to baseball, the Pirates, World Series. I love Triple it all. Triple Crown. Tell me the I love experience it. going through that with your friend, Elliot. You, uh, yeah, Elliot's the best. Uh, Kenny Trout, those guys are great friends. But it's kind of like if you grew up and you only had one pair of shoes, because that's all, you had one pair. And if it were tennis shoes, you wore them until they had a hole in them. You didn't just say, oh, they got some grass stains, so I'm getting rid of them. That's how you grow up. That meant you never went to a pro baseball, pro football. You didn't, couldn't buy tickets. Going to what, the World Series? Are you crazy? I can do all that now. I do it all. <laughs> Going to, the only way I would ever see a triple crown would be on TV. I was in the box of the owner. <laughs> of the Triple Crown winner. Meeting Bob Baffert, come on, this guy, and he wants to meet me. I don't have any idea why he'd want to meet me, but this stuff, meet presidents. People get mad in this state. Like, they, I don't know why we're so, like if I sit down with President George W. Bush, there are people mad. Are you out of your mind? I sit down with Obama, or, or I sit down with, John Kerry, I sit down with I'm, I'm our governor, who's right. Good guy, I like the guy. I may not agree. I may not agree with John Kerry. But that, are you kidding? Friday to Friday, one pair of shoes. When you have one pair of shoes, you know when you grow older, you end up with 100 pair of shoes because you could only have one when you grew up. And if you could afford to have 100, you do. This stuff, being a coach at Kentucky, 
you're put in the seat not just to coach basketball. You can move people. I've tried to do it through charitable endeavors. I've tried to do it to bring um, uh, light to different causes that I think are important for us. And our fans and our people here have responded to that. Now, they're not always happy with who I take a picture with. Too bad. You could be mad or not mad. I enjoy being around other people, especially successful people. You got quite a rise when you took the picture with Lamar Jackson a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, it was great. Chris Mack, do you know him at all? Yeah, at the I know Chris. What do, you, what do you think of him and taking over? Oh, that? he's, he's going to do great. It's, look, all these jobs are hard in different ways, but they're all hard. There is no easy basketball coaching position. Um, the, the, they expect too much too fast. They compare schools and you shouldn't. What's the best we can be here at Kentucky? What's the best Louisville can be? Maybe that's better than what we can be here. But we shouldn't be comparing what we're doing here to what they're doing there. I never have. And so what he's been able to do at where he's coached and the type of person he is, he's going to do great work there. Which, have you ever thought of revisiting the game in Louisville during the regular season? Or since it's gone away, has there not been that much of an uproar? You mean the, 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 the your home game in Louisville when you played? Would you have to play in the KFC Yum Center to do that? Probably because the other building's not up to snuff. And so we haven't, you know, and I know that drove everybody in Louisville crazy. But it's good for our state. Would you rather me play in Indianapolis and bring all that money and that to Indianapolis versus bringing it to Louisville, Kentucky? Louisville, Kentucky drives our state. Not Lexington, Kentucky. It is Louisville, Kentucky. The med programs, the athletic programs, the businesses, our business base is Louisville. The university has to do well for our state to do well. I just don't want them beating us. But I have no problem with them doing well and building their school and doing all the good stuff they do. I get that. They're, one of the, they're the main engine that drives our state and makes it better for all people.